three. So, general remark on BIPV. Now let's focus a little bit on Das Energy. Um, so it was founded to, in uh, 2010, and our main target was to develop innovative products for new applications and continue R&D in order to do both continuous improvement as new and put in new innovations. So right now we have the, the, the history is um, I met or I was introduced to the owner and the CEO of that company from by a friend who told me, Hans, you need to talk with him. This guy cannot walk 30 meters without having 50 ideas. So we started talking and he already brought some ideas. We spent two hours in the office and I killed more or less his ideas. And we said, but we both felt this, there is music in there. So we said, he still has an hour before he will be picked up. So let's say, let's go to the Hilton. We put, uh, it went there in the cafe in Vienna and we kept on scribbling on not, and the next hour we produced two ideas. This is one of it, we realized, but it took us four years to get it. The other one is still in the works, but this one is done. So idea was to combine solar PV and aircraft manufacturing know-how to develop innovative modules and commercialize then this technology with first customers after successful certification testing. So here was our first test, which we showed at uh, Le Bourget Air Show in Paris a few years back. So it looks, so it's an aircraft wing from one of his aircrafts, his building. And, um, but you, some of you might know Solar 1 and Solar 2 planes. So they are the modules, they are standard modules are clued to the, to the airplane. This is not clued. This is completely integrated. When, the mod, when this, this air, aircraft wing comes out, the modules are part of the wing, like a true building integration. So when we're gonna try to apply this same technology to uh, wall panels and roof shingles and so on. So that's the trick with it. Um, so we can make this, you see it's also flexible because it's bent from pretty, fl pretty flat close to the main fuselage up to a very uh, strong bend at the tip of the wing. So we can make it in standard sizes, we can make it in all type of shapes. Um, so that's what we have. So and now the, what, what's behind it? So there's no class. Uh, the key element is a glass fiber reinforced plastic core. Um, that's the inside. To the outside, we use uh, standard f uh, f uh, back sheets and EVA. That's the material which makes the lamination together. Uh, this ensures rigid rigidity, flexibility, quality, and durability all in one. So we can use any type of cell, multi-crystalline cell, especially after uh, silicon-based cells or high efficiency cells, but this is not thin film. Um, there are many flexible modules available with thin film. Uh, standard cells, typical sizes, two bus bar, three bus bar, these are these lines of electricity collectors. Standard 60 or 72 cell versions, all type of shapes, two and three Ds, without any problem. So here you see a round structure, it's just a module bend around, we can bend this at a, with a diameter of about 30 centimeters. So it's pretty, pretty uh, nicely bent. Applications, rooftop, we can build large size modules, which then can easily carry it. The, such a standard 60 cell module only weighs 3.5 kilograms versus 21 of a standard module. Um, noise protection walls at highway, which was one, also one application, which, but it didn't work out for economic reasons. Uh, we can directly attach it to the outside walls of commercial buildings. That is what you saw on this installation. Um, this one should show that we can also use it for the poles of any wind power plant. You know, they are pretty high and uh, they're doing nothing other than providing static support for the windmill on top. So, but there is a lot of space which looking west, south and east. So why not glue this thing on it and you have somewhat electricity. So you don't, if you want to move the windmill, you have electricity to do that without having to, um, for example, you know, they, they turn sometimes into the wind with not rotating or they have to turn them out of the wind. Now this electricity comes from the grid. You don't have to do that. So this could continue. Even you have no wind, this thing could generate electricity. So um, car, trucks, train roofs, um, wings I've shown, uh, anything. So we can practically glue this module on every service. Uh, it can be either standalone or we can make some stiff or semi-flexible structure, whatever you want to have, and uh, for even frame it and put it in like this, but it, this is more expensive than this one, so it doesn't make sense. And um, yes, easier installation already mentioned, and there's various ways of mounting and cluing. 
So this is one application which we also found nice. This was our first customer. Uh, we built the wings. This is uh, it's called Smart Flower. This is also the company name. Um, it's a mobile, all-in-one, plug-and-play system. What it does is, this thing is tactical, a dual-axis tracker, so it follows the sun in both axes. If there is strong wind coming, the whole thing falls together, folds together and puts itself in a box and <laughs> closes it. And if the weather gets nice again, it opens and <laughs> comes out and then you dwell the sun and it goes. So the main application for this thing is, one, you have a nice thing in your household, <laughs> But this thing is, this is the so-called military version, we call, they call it. It's not necessarily military, it's used, it's a, it's a mobile version. And, um, and it's mainly, the main application is disaster and rescue organization. For example, if, you, if there is an earthquake somewhere, normally both the electricity and the water supply are interrupted. So the rescue organization fly in, uh, reverse osmosis systems to generate water. And, and so you need electricity, which they normally bring in with diesel generators, so somebody had to bring in diesel to run them. And the idea is if you fly already the reverse osmosis system in there, and the diesel generators just fly these things over there. And they move, put them out, and you have this, this generates 3.5 kilowatt of electricity. It's quite a lot. What's its weight? Wait, wait. Uh, this, thing, this thing is around uh, uh, about a ton, one and a half ton still. But they are working in, this is, uh, is already glass fi uh, um, carbon fiber. But the, the main mast and the, and the box is pretty heavy. Now you are sure it's capacity, electrical capacity is? 3.5 kilowatt as a tracker. You know, nominal capacity would be a little bit lesser, but because it works as a tracker, it has a bit more capacity. Any of these uh, installation require that the modules pass a stringent set of tests. Um, the, there is uh, two norms, i.e. Uh, developed by the IEC, the International Engineering Corporation, or what it's called, and um, so any module which is sold in the world has to pass these set of tests, uh, mainly climate chamber, hail, wind, water, salt water tests, uh, um, uh, large UV exposure so they can't deteriorate. The yellow in the past, those modules started to yellow uh, when they saw so a lot of UV light, so this has also had to be prevented and so on. So our module also passed all the all the certifi uh, certification tests. We already got one certificate. The other one, this one, we'll get uh, very soon. All the tests are passed. The test results are now with the, with the issue of the certificate, and we'll hope to get that. We'll provide 10-year product warranty and 25-year um, warranty on the power output, as usual. That's standard. So um, this is showing now a bit the segment. I have shown you earlier the strong growth rate of PV in general, and there was a question asked, how does this market break down? Now, as I mentioned, commercial PV is the largest segment after utility scale, this type, uh, which accounts for about 25 of total installed capacity in 2013. In uh, 2015, yes, 14, 17, and, tw and 15, 20 megawatt of commercial PV is uh, forecasted to be installed. Now, commercial means it's um, rooftops of supermarkets, uh, uh, industrial buildings, factory halls, and, and the like. Inside of that is building integration, which is showing the fastest growth in the solar industry, at least for this, for this year. The cumulative capacity will increase or should increase by about 60% to about 265 megawatt installed. So you see this is very strong. The compound annual growth rate is 45%. It's a huge growth rate. So this, will, this curve will go up again, and then it will flatten, like every growth rate will, will go. So I already mentioned where we see our uh, dust energy products in there, lightweight autonomous energy sources to also substitute diesel generation. Um, military, I've shown you one, marine emergency service. But then we also go into vehicle roofs. Um, in Japan, for example, all trucks need to switch off the engine in front of a traffic light when it's red. So now Japan has all year such a climate for the most of the year. So the drivers like to have their air conditioner run when they're sitting there waiting for the traffic light to turn red, uh, turn green again. So they place these type of modules on the roof of the driver's house or even on the truck, and then they run, use the electricity to run to power the air conditioning. <laughs>
<laughs> so they can, don't have to switch that off. So that's, as if you imagine how many trucks are running in, in, uh, in the world, this could be very interesting. So um, these are applications from uh, companies we have worked with. Uh, what I'm, the pictures I'm showing is still class class, and we're working with them to replace them with our lightweight, because they also have an interest. It would, it would allow them to make the uh, uh, construction beneath much more simpler and cheaper. So you see it very nicely integrated in the facade. Here is in the shindle, in a rooftop. Uh, for example, this could be one mounting. Um, it's, a, it's a screw. Just run it with an electric drill, and it's easy to mount. Um, it also allows using making colored cells. Now, this is another example of what I mentioned earlier, how you want to optimize. What is your parameter? Nobody, normally you would say, well, who is so crazy making these cells? Because they all they lose efficiency. They only go to 10 to 14% uh, efficiency, whereas these cells normally are in the 70 and 18%. So I, I will talk later and explain to you the, the most critical parameter is to get really low-cost, high-efficiency cells. Now, but there is interest. Some people want to have a golden cell on their roof, not a blue one or a black one. They want this color or this color. This company, Sunways, is producing it. You can have it. You can buy it. It's a bit more expensive. And then you have a golden uh, roof. So, optical. Now, semi-transparency. I mentioned that one simple way is to place the solar cells at a distance. And then you use this one, it would then be in a glass glass model, or in our case also transparent. Light would go through here and here. But you can also make cells like this. So you can play with that. So you take a cell, and then you cut holes in it. All type, shape of holes with a laser. So if somebody would like to have this structure, that is to please architects, it again kills efficiency, not efficiency, it kills effective area, which could produce electricity, but it makes the architect happy or the house owner or whoever owns that. So you can do that, another form of how you build the transparent cells even, or this, they call it design cells. So this is another application where you can put lightweight modules. It's not really a building, it's a container, but it also goes down into this disaster area or even other applications. So this is a container. You transport it somewhere, for example, in an exploratory uh, drilling area where they drill for oil or gas. You don't want to build a high power line there. And if you have a diesel generator, normally they put diesel generators there, then somebody has to constantly put diesel there. So you take this container together with a drilling rig, put it there, and then you put these, these modules are normally stored in the inside. You unfold it, place it correctly, it generates electricity inside. You can still have a battery, or if you want a diesel generator, so they're really, you're really autonomous, and then you run it, and if you're done, you put it all together and transport it to the next side. Clearly also disaster areas can use it if there is like now Gaza will probably need something like this. Grimian and actually are putting these um, containers type uh, gas uh, turbine uh, generators there because they have they are lack of uh, electricity. So that's we call it hybrid container because it's a combination of several renewable energy components, maybe even including a diesel. So let me summarize. We see the cost of PV and following also the cost of BIPV falling. And this, we had seen in PV a very massive uh, price reduction over the last two years, about 50%. <clears throat> Such a module today, you can buy for 0.45, 0.5 5 euros per watt peak. A module typically has 250 watt, so let's make it $125 a year earlier. It costs double. So it's a huge, a huge saving. Um, this will enable uh, the use also in BIPV. It's Currently more expensive for the reason I mentioned than conventional PV. So if you, if you think of using PV on your house or with your parents' house or on your dacha, buy a standard module and mount it standard on a roof or in the garden and be done. Um, yeah, clearly, because it's more expensive, only high-end building materials can be thought of being replaced by, by BIPV. Um, and, uh, the others are, if you build simple, Plaster, uh, concrete or so, is, is they are much cheaper than, than uh, BIPV. So it will become less costly and then also uh, will approach the cost of mid-range materials. So there will be a broader market and with also more lightweight and flexible modules available, the addressable market will also be wider. So I would forecast uh, a continuous strong growth 
in BIPV because it's a huge area available in the world. You don't have to compete with agriculture. You don't have to uh, compete with other usage, with infrastructure. All these walls are there anyway. The roofs are there anyway. So why not use them for energy generation? And another, you know, some office buildings that have them roof construction. You have them shading construction, also semi-transparent, also nicely integrated in a, in a greenhouse. So there's, there are many, many applications and, and ideas coming now forward. And I think architects with this, I hope I can show that architects start to like VIPV, especially with these type of opportunities. Okay, so with that, sorry, wrong direction. With that, I would like to thank you.